Ain't me a saint City and color The way that you see The way you see it Don't you wish that I could give you I could give you everything sector person uh, because I'm from the private sector but what I've seen is is the people we call government officials for all intents and purposes are colleagues that's what I've seen now because it's about getting to work what can we do uh, and Zida is there you've heard all opportunities they sit in the provinces that's where the opportunity there is no opportunity in Zimbabwe which is in the air Whatever opportunity you want to pursue sits in the provinces. The role of Zida is to facilitate investment into the provinces, uh, as you have heard today. And I think Zido, in their wisdom, have started with showing us, uh, and the, uh, the ministers have done a fantastic job. I, mean, I, I think you can see the healthy competition uh, that slide that I want to share with you is, is statistics of inward remittances into Zimbabwe. I don't know whether from where you are, you can see. Uh, but this is up to half year in our monetary policy review, uh, the inward remittances. Diaspora remittances, $997 million. That's at half year, six months. So you annualize that as $2 billion. I need to tell you that in the year 2000, Zimbabwe's total exports were $2 billion. But now, diaspora remittances alone. So people are asking, what's happening in Zimbabwe? There are all sorts of narratives about what's happening in Zimbabwe, what's going on, everybody's got an opinion. But if you are a finance person like myself, you watch the numbers, you watch the figures. The figures are showing that we are 5x in terms of money coming into Zimbabwe. We are 5x what we were in 2000. That's times five. That's what the numbers are showing. And we always ask the question on diaspora remittances to say, if two billion is coming in, this is formal through what's known as MTAs or money transfer agencies. And I saw quite a few uh, exhibiting outside there. We ask ourselves the question, how much is coming on aeroplanes or on the bus from South Africa. And I'm gonna buy my ningi, 1,000 pounds E. Can I ask you we we always ask as in our economist group, this 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 we say it's at least it's another thank you honorable minister. It's at least twice. At least as a minimum. It could be more. Um, but as we rebuild confidence in our financial services sector uh, that number obviously is becoming more and more formal uh, as you are seeing. But it's a very important statistic. Our question, another question that we are asking is a lot of this inward remittance is consumptive. It's going into consumption. A lot of it is also going into property. If you see people will look and say, you know, and I have friends from outside, friends from uh, different places, they'll come and say, no. But when we come to Zimbabwe, what we see and what we read is very different. How come there is construction, things are going up, people are building. A lot of that is from these diaspora remittances. So not all of it is going into groceries. Some of it is going into houses, into homes. You go to Mad South. I went to a rural area somewhere uh, during uh, uh, Simon uh, Kayamoyo's funeral. May he so rest in peace. And we went down to uh, a place in Plum today. I come from Mad South. Uh, but we went down into the sticks the way I'd never been. But what I saw in terms of what they are putting up, double story buildings. Uh, this is diaspora. That was diaspora. And because I asked the, the person who was joining, who is putting up a double story? In much south, in the deep in the raw areas there. That's what people are doing. A lot of that, dear friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, is diaspora funds coming into Zimbabwe. And I think you need to give yourselves a round of applause. I 
I will move on now. Uh, this presentation will be available, so allow me to move a little faster here. Um, this is just highlighting domestic investors. The people that are already there are investing, they are reinvesting into Zimbabwe, and you can check the stats. Foreign direct investment, diaspora remittances, changing those diaspora remittances from um, consumptive type of diaspora remittances to more investment type. And somebody mentioned the reason why we in the diaspora, Amashan, you mentioned the reason is information. The information simply isn't there. And we shared a few things. Uh, so that changing diaspora investment or diaspora inward remittances more towards investment takes outreach, information, such as we are doing. But I will also encourage you to visit websites because a lot of what we are sharing there is on our websites. Uh, uh, um, and let's, let's visit the provinces, Zida itself, and we've got links to each other now, so you can go around there and see what we have. Mining, infrastructure development, road network, um, government has gone on an infrastructure drive. Um, as you know, maybe you may know or may not know that the road from Baikridge into Harare uh, is, is, I don't know whether you've driven along that road, but it's now uh, 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 really in tip-top condition. There are plans to now complete that to have bike bridge all the way through to Chirundu um, and so on. So infrastructure is very key at the moment and uh, development in that area. Consortia, consortia to, to rope in investors who are in the UK. So you have the knowledge, you have the knowledge. And some of you, you are going to get to retirement. And invest back home and have an invest. That's what we see other diasporas because we are also studying how are other diasporas are doing. Ghana is an older diaspora than Zimbabwe. And if you look at Ghanaians, the model, they will talk to their friends in the first world. Somebody's in solar, somebody's in uh, services. Uh, uh, Business process re engineering, create a company in the UK, invest back home, and you are a partner in the UK company that's investing back home. That, that would be a very clever model, and I would encourage colleagues in the diaspora to start thinking along those lines in terms of investment, manufacturing, tourism. I won't go into this, but just show you a couple of graphs here to show you some of the statistics to show you that others are investing in Zimbabwe. Whilst we are still thinking about it and waiting to see the future, whilst you are doing that, others are investing. We are busy at Zid, as land, licensing people. I won't tell you what they look like, but I will tell you we are busy licensing people. My wife, my wife is that, you know, I have brothers, cousins, you know. Uh, my, my madam, Mamoyo, I'm a Moyo and I married a Moyo, but you know, Moyo, you match not me like you, Moyo, you match. So we've got relatives in the dust. My worry is that the licenses that you are seeing there, 149 for one quarter in 2022, very few of them are Zimbabwe. That's my one. And once we license you, We've licensed you and you are operating there. It would be good to see a few more diasporans um, having a cake of what's happening in Zimbabwe, having a bite into what. Let's go to the next slide. This is the projected investment. Projected. This is self-declared. I need to qualify this as a, as, as a finance person. I need to qualify. This is what an investor declares when they come into the country and say, this is what I will invest. So, so this is self-declared. What you will see from Reserve Bank, which is our central bank, what you will see from the World Bank is inward remittances of money, only in cash. This is cash plus equipment plus intellectual property, anything else that they want to bring into the country, they declare their projected investment. We do monitor as ZIDA, we have a monitoring and evaluation process to see, and it's getting better and better, to see that what somebody declares is actually what they bring in. We've received a reasonable amount of figures, but uh, I'll give you an example. Manize, 
a couple of years ago was in this list. That's nothing is happening there. But now, I was there a few weeks ago, $1.5 billion. It's in from the jump down from these figures, these projections. So it's a, it's a life cycle. It's like marketing. You go in marketing, your marketing people will spend, spend, spend. You see, but there's nothing changing. But after a while, you start to see the value starting to come in. So we allow investors as they come in to declare and tell us what are they bringing in, how many people are they going to employ, and the like. And that's, those are the figures that you are seeing there. Um, so you can see some of the key sectors. Next slide. Just in one quarter, um, in terms of projected investment, that's what you will see there. Next slide. This is the UK, but in need of repair. This is upgrade from the national railways, and they're looking at various models in which they can create partnerships. I'll talk about partnerships just now in a moment. Installed capacity in terms of generation, that's the energy sector, that's the next one. Uh, we have power needs, because with all this investment that you've heard from our distinguished provincial ministers, all of it needs money, yes, but we also need power. We need energy. Investment requires energy. And so um, uh, we want to make sure that those partnerships, as ZIDA, we also continue to promote this sector. Um, and they are very interesting uh, developments in the energy sector, like net metering, where if you generate solar, you can actually receive money from uh, ZETDC, uh, which is the distributor in Zimbabwe of electricity. Uh, these are all very important, guaranteed by the Southern African power pool. So if you're worried, will I get my money out? We get all those questions. Um, um, and, and we are looking at how we are with a group of bucks up rich uh, people, you've got a fund, you put money together, create a consortium, you come to Zimbabwe, you want to do effective, you know, Gatsira Maskun shoes in which province? Hey. All right, let me look this up. Right, you, you want to fix school shoes, right? This is the opportunity, you put it together, you come. This is what we call general investment. You just come on your own as private sector, a private player. Um, you can come and we see a lot of those licensees that I showed you, a lot of them are in that category. Business people coming, India, China, Japan, you know, so many uh, 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 source markets for FDI that come into Zimbabwe. So this is that kind, the first kind of investment. The second one is a public-private partnership, Triple P. This is a contractual arrangement between the government and a private sector player. These are usually high-value projects uh, to do with sewage management, sewage disposal. They usually involve a municipality. See, I used to love the government. That was my job. Uh, about that time, we worked together. We used to go to Nyanga. They doing all these strategies. On, and I was the private sector guy. But now the president, in his wisdom, said, Moyo, we will not tell this. Now, come and help me to sort out these problems which you were raising. So, yeah, we're going to go neighbor. <laughs> now, I discovered how tough it is. It was easier just to criticize. <laughs> Getting to fix it, yeah. That's when Funamato <laughs> does So, pub, public private partnership, special economic zones. This one's a big one. Um, very specific. This is to designate an area, and I think we have about 13 to 15 of these. We designate a special zone. These are primarily for exports. You remember I said we have Africa continental free trade area. Once you've designated a zone, usually it's for exports. You're not competing with those that are local. Local. Um, if you're Michael Dell or somebody knows somebody from Dell and you assemble laptops, you know, in a special economic zone, you can export to the rest of Africa from that zone. That's the that's the thinking around those. So if you are a promoter, you know people that promote, develop. Special economic zones, we want to talk to you. Please get a hold of our team. Right, let me go. I need to put up pace now. Is that right there? We've gone from 21 days. This is to get an investment license, to get a company registered, because now all these have been automated. We're working with Zimra, the tax authorities, to be connected to ZIDA so that you can get your, not only your company, but your tax registration as well and start operating, which is first in class. 
Remember that we are business people as well. So, so what we are, people say, Moi, what are you telling the president? Eh? Is this, what, what we are telling is what a business person would like to register in the shortest possible time, all of that. And government um, has a resource see so that we are able to do that. So down to five days now. If your, if your experience is different, please get a hold of me. I'm the chairman. Uh, you can send me nicotimacy an email to say, Chairman, in India, it took a long time. If you come through Zida, by the way, it's not mandatory. It's not, you're not forced to come to Zida, especially if you're a diaspora and you know Zimbabwe. Looking at how we can lower that, you pay $500, and by the way, you can do this all online now. You don't have to come to Zimbabwe. You don't have to, uh, you, some people say, no, everyone is asking for money. Zida, we don't want, the money that we want is up front. This one, that's all you pay. And then we do our work. Nothing else, no, this one, uh, can you give me a little bit here, can you give me a little, we don't allow that. That's why President got people that are working, let's develop to our seven they are working, I'm, I'm got a full-time job so that I'm not asking you for money as an investor. I'm incentivized by seeing the investment numbers go up. That's when I'm a good chairman. So corruption, zero tolerance for corruption. We want you to be licensed to invest, to show progress in these provinces and other opportunities there. License application, approval, notification, pay your license, receive a digital copy of your license, collect a hard copy at ZDA, uh, our O6 is our one-stop shop facilitation. We have 19 desks from government that are at Zida, so that you don't have to go to the to Emma, to NASA, because what was happening was in Serendipity. No, there's still some areas because we are not fully digitized. You know, there are still areas where we are digitized. There's a digitizing program so that everything is automatic. The issuance of NASA licenses, uh, municipal licenses, shop licenses if you want a shop. Um, so those we are still working with fellow or sister MDA. Public partnerships, next one. We've also got a scannable material there. You can scan that. What private public partnerships are available right now? What is government looking for? There's the lady. Ooh. She's not smiling. Okay, thank you, Ambassador. This is getting serious. Uh, I'm about to round up. I'm going to round up now. Uh, housing real estate, housing prospectus. We've also got housing, lots of housing projects happening. A lot of diaspora funds. We've got a compendium of developments that are being done by banks, by private individuals, by consortiums back home. What we are doing at ZIDA is putting them out there for you to see, sitting outside, say, hey, I think this looks interesting. All, all levels. ZIDA, we serve everyone. It's not just the large companies. All the way, 100,000, you are there. Uh, so, that's what we do. The DIY license in Portable, we've gone through that. Uh, there's a special one, please go through, please go through. Uh, Victoria Falls, big area. Which province again? Mark North. Uh, big one, Victoria Falls. Lots of opportunities there, uh, uh, working together. Uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the Minister of State. Ladies and gentlemen, last slide. That's ZIDA, that's what we do. And we are open for business, we are the key to opening Zimbabwe for business. We are here to serve, we have 77 professionals drawn from the private sector to interface with you, to engage. Some of them were bankers here in London, all sorts of places, they understand the language. So please don't stay away, come to Zimbabwe. Let's get started with some investments. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think you are aware that His Excellency adopted the integrated results-based management system. And is the best performing minister for last year, Midlands. The first runner Permanent signal, <laughs> Why? Because we deal with big team. And can you go to the first slide? Right. The Midlands province again registered the highest GDP growth rate of 
10.9%. It's, it's, it's a fact. And the economy is driven mainly by mining, agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, infrastructure, energy, and power development. I have not left out health and education, they are embedded you know, in that. Next slide. So we have come on. So we also have um, interesting uh, projects for the diaspora because we do an aggregation kind of um, way like we have different farmers, small scale farmers, they can grow for us and we buy the produce that we then market to Europe and UK. So you can be a farmer who can also start growing um, the, 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 the crops that we can tell you. So we've got like women who are in um, Mumaruzeva and all that, they are doing my cooperatives uh, and they've been really successful in producing for us. So the next thing we have is um, blueberries. Just to let you know, blueberries are the new gold at the moment. So Zimbabwe has fine climate, fine weather, and uh, per hectare you can invest about $150,000 and for 15 years you could be making $240,000 per hectare. So if you have land, again, you can come to us. We've got the off tech and we are, we've got the contract with the Dutch company, uh, which is called the Fruit Vision Blueberries, which we can only harvest twice a year. And because of our climate, we are able to do that. So not taking much of your time, I would like to say, um, come and join us. It's quite an interesting venture. And we could actually, you know, create about half a billion a year if we are able to, 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 to start um, growing our blueberries. Last but not least, a company of our nature will require land, and it's been a problem. We've got a farm um, that is, those who took farms back in the day, they're not able to grow anything on it. We have been renting some of these farms and it's been creating problems, and since the ministers are here, I think I'll be able to have an opportunity to get land that we can start growing some of these crops. So you can go on the website kuminda.net and also Fairmark. You heard about Global Gap, um, it's meta certification. We also, we also do that and we are setting up to be um, the only company to certify in Zimbabwe. So I thank you. We thank you, Mr. Matemadu, with our Kuminda, the Executive Chair. Thank you so much. Once again... Our Ambassador, um, Ambassador Katande, our highly extinguished guest, please allow me to say all protocol observed. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Zimbabweans in the Diaspora Organization, which I'm going to shorten to ZIDO, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for attending this first edition of the Zim UK Business Expo. And I would want to believe that this is one, the beginning of many more events to come. I'm not going to say much, but all I can say is an inzivation spear. Those with ears have heard. I'm not going to dwell too much and spoil the rich information and the rich knowledge that we have acquired today, because they do say knowledge is power. So I just want to take this opportunity to encourage each and every single one of us to go back home and reflect on this information that we've been given and act upon it. One could go and you might not do anything about it. You might be very analytical. And you might not take that leap of faith and actually do something. But you know what? After hearing and learning from these amazing opportunities that we have back home, someone is definitely going to take advantage. And that someone could be a foreign national. It's already been established in the numbers. And you know what? Most of the, some of these foreign nationals, I'm not saying all, but the majority, they will not have the interest of Zimbabwe at heart. How about us, the children of Zimbabwe? I'm going to write on the mantra of our president of Zimbabwe, 
His Excellency Dr. Idim Nangaba. He says, a country is built by its own. So this is the time that we need to invest back in our motherland. We have acquired so much knowledge, so much skill here in the diaspora. We've become innovators, we've become very innovative, and this is the time that we need to encourage and allow for that change back in our motherland. Don't we all have this, the, the interest of our motherland at heart? Don't we want to see a positive impact in our future generation? Don't we want to see a better lifestyle even in our motherland in Zimbabwe? I think all of us would want to see a better Zimbabwe. They say faith with no action is dead. So this is the time that we need to rise up and take advantage of some of these incredible opportunities which are available in the different provinces of our motherland. And I'm not going to take much of your time. I'm just going to call upon the Zito executive just to come on stage and just to say their vote of thanks as well. But thank you all very much for coming to grace this occasion. To attend Zimbabwe Business Expo. Expo. <laughs> UK Zimbabwe Business Expo 2024. So we 
saying UK Zimbabwe Expo 2024. See you in Zimbabwe in December. This year, 2024 for another expo. <laughs> at Mikko's Hotel for another expo. UK is about to check them, check them. Just in case you want to do Well done guys, you did well. Thank you so much. Yeah, you did Thank well. Thank you so much. So we'll see you yes. this year. Yes, we'll be coming for the second edition. That's right. Of this you guys month. enjoy? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. You learned yeah. quite a lot. Eh? Yeah, you, you learned quite a lot. Eh? We did. We did. Yes. Yeah. 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 We did. Yes. It's been a very informative day. We have learned quite a lot. See you in the next. Keep it locked. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Thank you. You know me. I love it. I didn't see a doctor. How are you? Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh my you? god, <laughs> I have to take a picture with oh, you. Okay. Uh, so it's oh. nice to see a Guinness yeah. old doctor with yeah, oh, Jackson. How are yes, you? I'm doing great. Oh nice. my god. Nice meeting you. Oh, it's good. Congratulations. Sorry for your with your mother. I know. And then the baby coming. Oh. Yeah, my son's. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when are you? Can we take a picture? Are, yeah, no problem. When are you going to visit? After the After dinner. I was out like I was out like Wow. So if you go online and search for us, you will see what we do. And here in the UK, we deal with women that have been affected by domestic violence. Uh, so we do with uh, refugees. So our next event is on the 19th if you want to take part. But the major one is this one. So this so is a is save the day. This is in April, April the 25th of 26th of April. 2025 but we tell people like you now so that you can include us as one of the charities that you support so you work as a charity yes yes i'm i'm the ceo i'll, I'll and tell founder. you i'll tell you mm -hmm. i'll tell you someone mm -hmm. me i support charity oh wow there's a lady called uh Ranya. Everything One, two, three And my heart is racing